looks like a great program, but how do you get people in here? I mean, if they don't know about it and come in and access it, it doesn't matter how good it is, but the people in the community aren't coming in and taking advantage of it. And maybe the same people who don't access the services normally might not find this place. How, how do you do that? I, I can start and then Martha can take over, but it's, it, it's very simple. There are already thousands of people that come through the homeless prenatal program's doors each and every day, or each and every year. And this is one more service added on to the amazing work that HPP is doing every day. So, you know, it's, it's word of mouth and it's at trusted community-based organizations already. I would just add to that that uh, our staff of 58 more than half of them have come from the population that we serve. So it's a real investment in the community that we're trying to serve. And we create a trusting relationship that others couldn't really have to the degree that we do. Families come. And if I just may add, from what I see here today, there's a synergy between a single stop being here and a place trusted already by the population it's designed to serve. And so it, it makes it easier then to go to the next step with a uh, single stone. Speaker yes. Pelosi, uh, Laura Chick, the state uh, recovery auditor, is going to be in town on Wednesday. She has said that something like 10% of all funding tends to get lost to waste, fraud, and abuse over time. This program is designed to try and recover money that is otherwise wasted. Can you talk about what's being done on the Recovery Act funding to reduce the amount of waste or to recover the amount of waste that's going to be an inherent part of our system? Well, I, I don't. I, I, subscribe to the notion that the recovery has uh, large amounts of waste that is out there. It, there's a time release capsule as to how this money will be put out for the purpose of making sure it goes out uh, for the reason it was appropriated in the first place. And it was designed to, to uh, be spent out over time. That's quite different from saying we have many people probably I think about over 50,000 people in the city of San Francisco who qualify for the earned income tax credit, which is refundable. Ma many people don't know that they qualify for that. So that's not really a waste, it's just an underutilized resource. Uh, so that's why when we're doing the health bill, we're talking about squeezing $500 billion out of the system of money that it may be waste, fraud, and abuse, but may be underutilized, duplicative, or uh, obsolete anymore. And we know that we can pay for that program uh, for, for more, in a more positive way by squeezing some of those funds. But the recovery package is on course to do what it set out to do. And if it were not there, even the Republican economists tell us our job, our unemployment rate uh, would be much higher than it is. I'm very proud of what it does what it, and what we're going to be doing in our education. I was talking with Kathleen Aliotto earlier, Mr. Chancellor, about what's in our uh, Education Act that passed the House and that is now, I mean, not the House, the committee, and will be, uh, as we move forward with the health bill and the energy bill, the education bill, the three pillars uh, to, um, uh, to turn the economy around, create jobs, lower taxes, reduce the deficit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you go back to Washington, you're going to tell your fellow um, congressmen and yeah. women that this is a great example. It's the sets an example nationally. And so I was wondering what sorts of legislation, what issues are being discussed in Washington right now regarding uh, social services or services to low income families? Well, the biggest issue of all, of course, is health care right now. Uh, so that is the bill that has so much of the focus. It doesn't mean that at the same time we aren't passing legislation that perhaps will have more resources in there uh, for homeless prenatal program or single stop, which we want to, again, be able to support them. That's in our appropriations bill. But the biggest initiative to help people is the health issue. It's a, not only a health issue for families, it's an economic issue for families. It's a job issue for people uh, to give them the freedom to have the job that they want, not necessarily the one they must hold on to because they have health insurance. So this is going to be a pretty exciting time. I spoke earlier to a group of, uh, about innovation and how innovation was going to help us reduce cost and how innovation was going to help us do exactly what is happening here. That's why I say this is a model. Bring the, the initiative to where people live 
that, that they can be um, uh, met with in a short period of time. So it's closer to home or work, it's faster, it's less costly, and in a case of, of health care, uh, better quality health care for them. That is the overwhelming issue. In the meantime, I'm still working on getting some resources in other legislation that uh, has already passed the House. We're waiting for it to pass the United States Senate. But the health issue is a very exciting one. Oh, you have is a question? Does single stock also address homeless people with disabilities? Oh, sure. The single stock. Well, single stock addresses the financial needs of families and the benefits that they're entitled to. And then they, as an organization, um, might not address disabilities except for what one is entitled to because of a disability. But organizations like the Homeless Prenatal Program would definitely address disabilities and, and make sure that families with disabilities or who had members of their families with disabilities would get the services that they needed in order to be able to move on. If I might say on this score relating it to the health bill, the, remember what I said about there's a cap on what you pay in premiums, but no cap on what you receive in benefits. This is extremely important for people with disabilities. And by disabilities, I mean all the traditional definitions of it, but also people with chronic disease like cancer and the rest. That's why uh, the disabilities community is so excited about the legislation, because for the first time, this breakthrough that says you pay your premiums and, and it's a whole array of, of, uh, of subsidies to help people pay their premiums if they can't. And, the, and then within that, uh, whatever they need, they will receive. This is a very big change. And some people are not comfortable with the change. And well, if I may say, I believe that all of this change is facilitated because of innovation, much of it begun in the San Francisco Bay Area. And this whole change is better implemented if we have a public option to do these new things in the uh, health bill that we are putting forth. So watch it. Uh, if you have a person in your family with a disability, this bill goes a very long way to bring much more comfort to the family, re relieve the stress, and get better care for them. Thank you, Single Stops. Thank you, t Tipping Point. Thank you, thank you, especially prenatal, homeless prenatal programs.